Hi guys, welcome to Self Care Sunday. As you can tell by now, Self Care Sunday is probably my favorite portion of Nicole's network. I love talking about self care. Why? For starters, we don't take care of enough. We don't take care of ourselves enough. <laughs> Secondly, we don't talk about self care enough. Um, and we don't, a lot of times, we don't feel like we deserve self care. I'm here to challenge that notion. Self care Sundays are about to be a thing. You ready? Hashtag self care Sundays. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so today's topic, we're talking about balancing mental health. As a lot of you guys know, I have struggled with depression, low self-esteem, um, suicide, grief, the grief of a miscarriage, um, daddy issues, you name it. And I've been pretty open about that. The reason I have been open about that is because I understand that there's healing in the power of our testimony and that I know that if I'm able to touch one person and help them understand that they're not alone, they may be more willing or more eager to seek the help and get the help that they deserve and need. Cool. So I have five steps for balancing your mental health. You guys ready? <laughs> Step number one is understanding that history can and will repeat itself. What do I mean by that? I mean by your family's history as well as your personal history. So my mother's father and my father's mother have both been hospitalized for mental health. They're both deceased at this point. But when I recognize that my maternal grandfather and paternal grandmother had both been hospitalized for mental health. So I literally have it coming from both directions. That meant I had to take my mental health concerns very seriously and had to be proactive about it and being intentional about getting the help that I need. I have also dealt with mental health my whole life, like as far back as I can remember. As young as seven years old, I tried to take my life. So my personal history and my family history can repeat itself if I'm not actively working on how do I overcome these challenges. Side note, understand that just because your child doesn't pay bills does not mean that they don't have things to be sad about. So when a child finds the courage to say that they need help, please don't dismiss it. Please take their help very seriously and get them to a counselor who is trained to deal with child psychology. It is a real thing. There are children losing or taking their lives. The youngest documented suicide, successful suicide, I believe was four years old. Like kids are hurting and we as adults are responsible for every child around us. Even if it's not your biological child that you pushed out or conceived, if you have connections with a child who is hurting, you are responsible for them. We are all responsible for the next generation. We have to get these kids help. We have to. It is required of us to help the next generation. They need us and they are not able to defend themselves. They are not able to support themselves. Regardless of your connection to that child, if a child comes to you and says, I am hurting, I need help, I am sad, depressed, even if they can't find the words for it, if you see it, do something about it. Okay? Cool. Two. Sorry, I had to get off my tangent for a second. Because <laughs> that it's a real thing, guys. It's a real thing. Step number two, recognize what are your mental health triggers. For me, grief. So when the anniversary of when I delivered my twins and the anniversary when they should have been born, um, both of those dates are difficult for me. They really are. Um, for me, I also know that financial struggles are a trigger for me. I also know dating relationships can be a trigger for me. I also know friendships can be a trigger for me. So with that being said, I'm conscious about my health, mental health triggers and I put plans in place. And when I see things starting to go downhill, I make a conscious effort to fix it. Um, and 
part of understanding uh, your mental health triggers leads me into step number three, which is create a self-care routine. You have to know what works for you. Part of my self-care routine is making sure that my hair and nails are together, making sure that I'm getting massages every three weeks, making sure that I'm seeing my therapist at least once a month and recognizing when I need to see her more often. Um, There was a point where I was seeing her weekly. Um, When I was pregnant with the twins, I started seeing this therapist because I knew my history with depression. Um, And so that goes back to history can and will repeat itself. Uh, Because of my history with depression, I knew it was important to get ahead of the struggles that I was dealing with while I was pregnant so that I could minimize or avoid postpartum depression. Because I didn't want my children to be impacted by my mental health struggles simply because I refused to deal with them. So create a self-care routine that works for you. Um, Part of my self-care routine is also having self-care Sundays. Taking a day off from life to just be me. To just do what I want. What does Tiara want? Step four, seek help. Seek help. Therapy is an amazing tool. My suggestions for finding a therapist, um, first of all, most healthcare providers will pay for mental health because it's considered preventative treatment. A majority of health insurances pay for health insurance. I mean, pay for mental health services. Um, Finding a therapist, I would recommend starting with who's in network so that your insurance company will pay for or pay a majority of it. Then sort by gender, race, and someone who specializes in the problems that you're dealing with. That's my biggest suggestion. And then sometimes you may have to do a little trial and error. Um, But that will help you narrow down the list pretty quickly to understanding. Because at the end of the day, I don't want to sit in a room and explain to somebody what it means to be a black woman. I don't want to have to explain what it means to be a woman. I don't want to have to explain what it means to be a black person in America. I want to focus on getting deeper and understanding what it is that I, Tierra, am dealing with. I want you to already come to the table understanding the struggles of a black woman in America. And for men, I recommend the same thing. Like You should be seeking out a therapist who understands what it means to be a black male in America. Like, find a therapist that you identify with by gender, race, and who specializes in the struggles that you're dealing with. And then, of course, with a network for your health insurance. Cool. Step number five, protect your peace. Protect your peace. It is an active thing that you're going to have to do, and you're going to have to work to make sure that your peace is protected by having the right people around you, exercising your no exercising your no and placing your needs first. So, going to recap for you. Step one, history, understanding that history can and will repeat itself. Step two, step two, recognize your mental health triggers. Step three, create a self-care routine. Step four, seek help. And step five, protect your peace. So, what's your favorite step? Put it in the comments below. But most importantly, make sure you subscribe and I will look forward to seeing you every self-care Sunday, okay? Hashtag self-care Sunday. So if there's a subject that you have questions about, you want to understand more about, you want to talk about, let's hear it. Put in the comments, share this video with somebody who needs it, um, and make sure you subscribe, make sure they subscribe, and I will see you next week. Thanks, guys.